Holy Cow Alibaba How's Everyone Today? Our last portion of the Thailand South Drive is from Shukatai to Chiang Rai. It took us about 6 hours to reach Chiang Rai, so this was almost a whole day of driving. We made several stops at the service area for our lunch, toilet break, and coffee. I found that 7-Eleven in Thailand is so much similar to Japan 7-Eleven. Both have lots of interesting local snacks in attractive packaging. From local dry fruits and bakeries to Japanese snacks, you certainly have to go check out the 7-Eleven when you are in Thailand. Please also watch out for those promotional items where you can buy one and get one free. You will notice there are a few service areas while self-drive in Thailand. One of our favorite service areas for petrol and snacks is BTT. BTT oil and retail business usually have the Cafe Amazon where you can get nice coffee, 7-Eleven, clean toilets and some local food stores to fill your stomach. Now let's find out places to visit in Chiang Rai. We reached Chiang Rai at around 4pm but we were tired so we go to our resort to check in immediately. This is not the first time for us to visit Chiang Rai. A few years back, we did a similar cell drive from Bangkok to Shokotai and then to Chiang Rai and Chiang Mai. This time, we didn't want to include Chiang Mai because Chiang Mai is too commercialized for overseas tourists and we prefer a more local experience. On day one evening, we went to Chiang Rai Night Market. We didn't want to drive to the city, so we took a tuk-tuk instead, which cost about 100 baht. We just wanted to experience the tuk-tuk experience in Thailand, so we asked the hotel front desk to help us call a tuk-tuk. On the way back, we used Grab instead. It is actually cheaper to call Grab. And also, with air conditioner and better seats, you get a better service with Grab car. You can see that the Chiang Rai Night Bazaar has been hit hard by COVID, but it is slowly coming back to life. We had our dinner at the food court, which has lots of stores to choose from. The food is very cheap and you notice 80% of the customers are still local people. There is a stage where performers will be singing and dancing, but we left without waiting for it to start after finish our dinner. You can also get local souvenirs here and traditional street food. We didn't bargain for the prices when we purchased our souvenir because these sellers aren't easy too since COVID time. Dinner, we had the local zhicha in the food court. We ordered 3 to 4 dishes and the total cost us about 300 baht. That is about 12 Singapore dollars for 3 people. One of the street foods that we have is the Thai durian. Thai durian is so much different from ours in Singapore and Malaysia. We got a box of Thai durian with three seats, which cost us about 340 baht. That is about 12 Singapore dollars. Thai durian are usually very big in size, and the durians are harvested before the fruit is ripe. That is, the durian is plucked from the tree directly. Since it was harvested before they are fully ripe, so Thai durians do not smell as strong as Malaysian durians. How about the textures and taste? Well, my Thai friend told me that Thai people prefer to eat durians that are not too soft. In fact, they prefer the durians' textures a little bit hard. Indeed, our first bite, we found out that the durians' textures is still a bit hard and had less aroma and was not that sweet too. If you compare the price, the Thai durians actually cost more expensive than the Malaysian durian. The Thai mango sticky rice is mixed with thick coconut cream and sugar, 
pair with perfectly ripe yellow sweet mango. Serve with some extra coconut cream on the top to make it even better. The street mango sticky rice costs about 60 baht. That is about $2.30 Singapore dollars. Golden Triangle is about an hour drive from Chiang Rai. It is about 68 km. This lush jungle and misty mountain area is deep in history and is famous for its opium growing past. Today, the Golden Triangle is a popular tourist destination, but still well worth the visit. It was our second visit to the Golden Triangle. The first time we came here, it was full of tourists and we couldn't get on the boat ride. This time, we have the opportunity to get on a boat and explore the three borders Thailand, Myanmar, and Laos. The boat ride is about 45 minutes. Hiring a boat enables you to see three countries meet at the same point. The motorboat driver stops at each country's borders and tells us the landmark. You see Myanmar Casino and Laos Casino near the shore. Historically, the Golden Triangle has been an area well known for the growing of opium. House of Opium Museum is located nearby and display the history of opium in this area. Situated in Bang Sop Rock, near the confluence of the Mekong and Rock River, there is a huge golden Buddha statue sitting on a ship. This giant golden Buddha stands overlooking the Mekong River. This is where tourists stop to get photos and toilet break and hop on the boat ride to the three borders. We had our lunch at one of the paddy field restaurants nearby. Not in the city, but on an outskirt, which is about 15 minutes drive from Golden Triangle. It is an interesting restaurant catering for locals. They serve mostly Thai cuisine at affordable prices. The backdrop is stunning with golden paddy fields, and you are sitting in the traditional atap hut to eat your meal. Pretty nice experience and a kampong ambient. Let's visit Doi Masalong. Doi means mountain in Thai. This is our next destination. It is about an hour to reach Doi Masalong, but we were lost, so it took us more than two hours to reach there. Doi Masalong is the site of Santi Kiri village, a community settled by the former Chinese 93 division who moved from Myanmar to reside on Thai territory in 1961. A few years ago, we visited here and the small town of my salon is full of tour buses and traffic. But now this place is like a ghost town. Slowly, it should resume back to normal. Things that you can do here include visiting tea houses and tea plantations, tasting Yunnan food, and one of my favorite is Cross Bridge Rice Noodles. In Chinese, it is called Guo Qiao Mian Xian. You find people love to enjoy their meals on the riverside here. There are many riverside restaurants in Chiang Rai. Lunam is one of the most well-known restaurants and you notice most of their customers are local Thais. Lunam restaurants offers typical northern Thai dishes which we don't really know how to appreciate. A little too spicy for us and the dishes uses certain herbs that we aren't used to. But you do see this restaurant is full house for local Thais. The restaurant is located near Chiang Rai city not too easy to find, but it is located next to the Amarin Resort. The White Temple is also known as Wat Rongkun. Wat in Thai means temple. 
This is a privately owned art exhibit in the style of Buddhist temple, which was opened in 1997. Most of the temples you see in Thailand are covered in gold, but this is a special one in Chiang Rai. Why in white? Because it is a symbol of Buddha's purity. The white indeed is really stunning, especially since it also has thousands of small mirror pieces of glass creating a glistering look, so glaring that you may need sunglasses. The White Temple is located outside the city of Chiang Rai, about 15 km away, 15 minutes drive from the city. This unique design mixing contemporary and classic styles makes this one of Thailand's most unusual and visually striking man-made attractions. The entry fees is about 100 baht, that is about 4 Singapore dollars. Nearby, there are stores for food and drinks and souvenir. The Blue Temple is known as Wat Rong Son Ten. It is in the bright shade of rich sapphire. Blue Temple is a lesser known tourist destination and far less busy. As of now, there are no entry fees for Blue Temple. About 80 to 100 years ago, this place was an abandoned temple. According to tales told by the elders, there weren't many people settling in the area back then. So there was a large number of wildlife, especially tigers. Locals who passed through this area often saw tigers leaping around, which eventually became the origin of the site being called Rong Sun Ten, literal translations from Thai, Dancing Tiger Ditch, a name that also applies to the nearby village. So it came to be called Rong Sun Ten Village as well. Big C is the second largest hypermarket after Lotus. You see them in many cities in Thailand. What I love about Big C is there are always free parking lots for their customers. Even if you aren't shopping, there are still plenty of restaurants to choose from, such as KFC, local food, Japanese, and many more. We ordered a sukiyaki hot pot, Japanese ramen, a sushi sashimi set, yakisoba noodles, and their traditional dessert, zenzai red bean soup served hot, and green tea warabi mochi served cold. The food in Yayoi is relatively cheap compared to Japanese food in Singapore. What about the taste? Well, I've been living in Japan for several years and I do know what authentic Japanese food tastes like. Yayoi meet my standard and I will give a very good review for them. We just didn't expect to have such good quality Japanese food in Thailand and there are cheap too. Well, if you are in Thailand, do visit Yayoi restaurant. There are many chains outlets around the country. There are several locations to visit the Long Neck village, but we went to the biggest village in Chiang Rai. There is an entry fee of 300 baht per person. That is about Singapore dollars 12. I have to say, this is one of the most exotic experiences. Who are the Karen people? Well, the Karen are a tribal group who has historically lived in the Myanmar near Thai border. The Karen women wear heavy brass rings in gold around their necks, forearms and shins. Why do they wear those long brass rings? In the early days of the long necks, the practice of the brass rings was started not just for the beauty but also to protect against tigers. There aren't many long neck Karen's women left in the village. Too many of the young Karen women are breaking with tradition and it is estimated that the long neck practice only has a few generations of life left. There are also other tribes living in the village, but each wearing their own traditional outfits, 
and selling similar things. Mafalong Garden is about an hour drive from Long Neck Village, a beautiful garden located high up on the mountain of Dui Tung. You need to reach there by 5 p.m. because the ticketing booth closes at 5 p.m. You can take your time to check out the garden and don't have to come out by 5 p.m. Mafalong is named after the princess mother. The stunning view over the mountain is fabulously designed. Lots of colorful flowers and many photos opportunities. The garden is well kept and clean, with a good pathway even for the wheelchairs. Rolling me, my thoughts get so bad. I'm like, I might grab a bat. I don't know my wrath, my blood boils over like. Oh God, here goes. I lost all feeling from my head to my toes. You said some shit that I can't let go. So just stay tuned for the rest of the show. So have you ever felt betrayed? Which is how you see things. Realize something new. It was a nice brief stop to check out the local hot spring in Chiang Rai. Only local visiting this place. Entry is free. And the location is right after we came down from the Mafalong Garden. Our dinner is at Civic Tama the Coffee House. Again, the restaurant is located beside the Cork River, a beautiful colonial western house in white colour that serves Thai western fusion cuisine. The portion is big and tastes good too, a mixture of western and Thai taste. Well, you do find Vietnamese spring rolls and Australian beefs too. The price is reasonable with this good standard. Service is good. Where to stay in Chiang Rai? We stay in the legend Chiang Rai Boutique River Resort and Spa. The resort is located right beside River Kok and close to Chiang Rai Night Market. The room is spacious, especially the shower room. Feels like showering in the nature. Breakfast is served with Thai and Western choices with their special in-house fruit jam. A beautiful ground, it definitely feels as though you are in the middle of nowhere with nature. We spent 10 days in Thailand at Khao Yai, Shukatai, Chiang Rai and Bangkok. Legend Resort Chiang Rai is the cheapest hotel we book among all others that we book in Thailand. It is about Singapore dollars 100 per night including breakfast for a room with three adults. The hotel is located in a local neighborhood. Pretty interesting too if you have a chance to walk out of the resort and look at how local Thais live their life. Now my final thoughts for you. I personally favor Chiang Rai more than Chiang Mai simply because the things here are cheaper and more countryside. Visiting the Karen tribe is another eye-opening experience that you should not miss. Three to four days is enough to explore Chiang Rai. I have to say Chiang Rai is probably one of the best known hidden gems in Thailand. Beside White and the Blue Temple, the other famous temple would be the Black House Museum, also known as the Black Temple. There is an international airport in Chiang Rai. It is about 15 minutes from the city where we stayed. We took a domestic flight from Chiang Rai to Bangkok, which is our last destination in Thailand, 
before we flew back to Singapore. Hence, we returned our rental car in Chiang Rai Airport. Thank you for watching. If you love my travel story, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. See you in the next chapter. Thank you. Bye bye.